As soon as I saw this picture, I knew it had to be black and white. With a cloudscape like that, couldn't be anything else, could it? And the type of effect I'm after is going to be something very similar to this one here. Right, let's have a look at the workflow I used to produce that black and white. We're going to start off by using Command J, Control J. That's Command J, Control J to duplicate the background layer. Now where it says layer 1, we're going to double click and I'm just going to call this B slash W4 black and white. Press enter or return to apply that. Right, to convert it to black and white and to give us the start position, we're going to go to enhance. We're going to go to convert to black and white. Now when this dialog box opens, you can see it's quite a large uh, box. We've got uh, the before, we've got the after, and this is showing us the after for the style setting here of scenic landscape. That is the default style. Now you've got other styles here, but the thing they all have in common is if you bring your cursor up where it says R60, G28, B12, that's red, green, and blue, add those numbers together, you're going to get 100. Now, that's the easy part. The tricky part is trying to move the sliders around, which you've got here, to adjust it to still give you that 100. And if you just click on this, bring your cursor back up again, you can see the way those numbers have changed here. Let's go to Portrait, and you can see they've changed around yet again. And as I said, you know, just bring your cursor in, and if we come to something like, let's just take a look, the sort of effect I'm after here is where we've got the really dark sky. Move it around as well, because it is a large dialog box, so move it around so you can see the entire picture. I want to darken down the sky a little bit more, so I'm going to come to the blue, and if I just drop this down, you can see it's just indicating there. If you hold your cursor over that little slider, it's getting rather shy. But if you hold your cursor over it, there it is. That's plus 140. That's plus 40, so we're already up to 180. This is minus 105, so I can afford to drop it down a little bit more. I can come into this slider here. I can move this across. And this is where it can start to get just a little bit on the tricky side. Not so sure. I like the sky, but I'm not so sure I like the rest of the picture. So uh, it's playing with these, come into the uh, the contrast, and it can start to look a little bit messy. Just click Reset. That takes you back to the default setting, the scenic landscape there. I'm going to go for Vivid Landscape, which, uh, yeah, does a really good job converting this, and I'm simply going to click on OK. So select the style that best suits your image. Right. There it is. Next. Make sure you've got the default colors. Press D on the keyboard if you've got any other colors because it is important to have black as the foreground, white as the background. These are the default colors. Because we're going to be using an adjustment layer of the gradient map. Now as soon as I click on this, look what happens to the picture. Pow, looking pretty good. Let's just close that down for a second, switching it on and off. There's the before, there's the after, and you can immediately see the difference we've had on the picture by just introducing this gradient map. Let's take a look and see what's going on. Well, we've now got black and we've got through to white. If you click in the window here, you get the gradient editor, and this is where we can make even more changes. Now, it can be a little bit tricky to operate this, but if you just click on this little color stop here, this is the color stop for black, You'll notice we've now got a little mid one here. This is the color midpoint. And we've also got the white midpoint here, or the white color stop, should I say. Click on this, you've got 100. Bring your cursor back to the color midpoint here. Click on this, you've got location 50, and this one is 0. If you bring your cursor to where it says location, you notice you get a, uh, yeah, an arrow going through your finger. We can move this across, and as we start to move this over, I'm going to take it right over, we're introducing more of the black pixels into the picture. We're darkening it down, so we can move it over to something like this. I'm going to take it back into that area for now. We can do exactly the same with the whites. We can move these over into that area. We can see the way we can brighten the picture up. So uh, you know, just adjust it to suit the image that you're working with. I'm going to move this back into that position. Bring your cursor up as well. Make sure it says color midpoint. If you move it very, very slightly to the side, it says add color stop. Don't do that. And I'll show you the reason why in just a minute. But I'm going to click on this one to start off with. I'm going to move it into this position here looks pretty good like that. Let's go to the uh, blacks. 
3. Let's increase that by moving it over into that area. You can, of course, click on the little downward facing arrow. That gives you the slider. You can move it around. Notice the way that the midpoint one, as well as the black, is moving at the, the same time. Let's click on the white, and I'm just going to move this into the image, introducing more of the lighter pixels, something like that. Click OK. Click on the little cross to close it down. Now this is an adjustment layer. You can you know, you can save the entire picture now as a PSD file, a Photoshop file. Save it in layers. You can put it aside. You can come back to it. You can look at it with fresh eyes and you can then make any other adjustments to it because don't forget as soon as you click on this this is going to give you all the numbers that you've just put into it. There it is, 6, and if I just make sure you click on this one, 55, and on this one, oh, and I did say that if you just click down and you're not exactly on that color stop, you're going to add a color stop, things can start to look pretty horrendous, a bit like that. If they do, don't panic, just click Cancel. That takes you back to this gradient map. Click in the box to open it again, there it is. It's all back where you started, or back where you left it, should I say. But for now, I'm just going to click OK to that, and OK, because there's something else I'd like to do with this picture. I want to darken it down even further. We're going to come back to our original black and white. Let's just switch this off for a second. I'm going to use Command J, Control J. That's Command J, Control J to duplicate our black and white layer. We've now got black and white copy. Now, the simplest way to darken this down is go to the blend mode, and select multiply. Look what that does to the image. Looking pretty good. Let's switch back on our adjustment layer of black and white. Looking even better. I'm going to come to this layer. We're going to go to the opacity slider here. So bring your cursor up. You then get an arrow going through your finger again and you can just reduce this down and we can begin to sort of blend it in with the layer underneath. I'm going to head to this direction. That looks pretty good like what that's doing with the image. Let's double click. Let's bring back our gradient map. Let's bring back our gradient editor. Taking a look at this. I like this really dark sky here. like the... yeah, I really like what this is doing to the image. Let's just have a, a little bit of a, an adjustment with this. Taking it, darkening it down. Now I'm just going to take it back a touch there. So I think I've gone back into that area. I'm going to drop this down as well into this position. Let's take a look at uh, this. Let's make it a little bit darker. Now I like the whites in the image, so I'm going to bring that back to 97. Taking a look at this, that looks pretty good. Yeah, about that snow. Taking it back to where it was. In that, and you can see one small, yeah, one number change there. The surprise and the difference that can make with the image. I'm going to take this to six, and I'm going to click OK to that. I'm going to click OK to this, and there it is. That's the finished image. Put it aside, leave it aside, then look at it with fresh eyes, make any adjustments. Don't forget we can come back to this, we can change the blend mode, we can drop that down a little bit further, we can increase it entirely up to you, quite like that where it was. I think the number I had was 67. That looks pretty good. But just a very quick run through. That is what we started off with. There's our color image. We then put in a black and white layer. Don't forget we use this as a start position. We then introduced an adjustment layer using the gradient map looking pretty good too but then duplicating our start position layer here there it is with a multiply blend mode to darken it down the opacity slider just to fine tune it there's our finished image go on give it a try it will vary from image to image so experiment with it see what you come up with but try the different ways of darkening down images brightening up images introducing blacks introducing whites important thing of all have fun with it. Hope you've enjoyed the video, but until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.